And welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp, and I'm the Executive Editor of Dataversity. We would like to thank you for joining this month's installment of the Dataversity webinar series, Enterprise Data World. This webinar series is designed to give our Enterprise Data World conference attendees year-round education, a conference we produce in partnership with DEMA International. Enterprise Data World will be held this year in Austin, Texas, April 27th through May 4th, 2014. And if you want to save $200 off your registration, be sure you register by this Friday to take advantage of the early bird discounts. Today's webinar is a preview of one of those talks you can experience at the event, Metadata Management, Getting Off on the Right Foot with Ian Rollins. And just a couple of points to get us started. Due to the large number of people that attend these sessions, you will be muted during the webinar. For questions, we will be collecting them via the Q&A in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, or if you like to tweet, we encourage you to share highlights or questions via Twitter using hashtag EDW14. As always, we will send a follow-up email within two business days containing links to the slides, the recording of this session, and additional information requested throughout the webinar. Let me introduce to you our speaker for today, Ian Rollins. As Vice of President of Product Management, Ian is responsible for the Enterprise and Application Metadata Repositories, ASG Rochade and ASG Manager Products, and ASG Bcubic and other strategic solutions. He manages product launch and delivery plans and creation and management of partner relationships. He was previously VP of Metadata Man Development. And before ASG, he is Director of Indirect Channels for Viasoft and leading EM vendor acquired by ASG, owning relationships with partners outside of North America. Ian has, Ian has worked extensively in metadata management, IT systems, and financial management, and presented at conferences worldwide, including DEMA and CMG. He has many years of experience in applications design and development and has managed uh, many different databases and design systems to run a variety of hardware and operating systems. Originally from the UK, Ian is a, a chartered IT professional and a standing member of the British Computer Society. We, look, we have worked with Ian often and very, always look forward to him speaking with us. Uh, he also, be sure to check out his blogs on Dataversity, and we're very lucky to have him here with us today. And with that, I will give the floor to Ian. Hello and welcome. Thanks, Shen. You know, I, I, and for anybody who didn't do it, you always need to check early to these webinars because she puts on the greatest selection of music. Well, I want to say I really don't think there's a link between and uh, hard-hearted Hannah the Lamp of Savannah. I think there's a connection. Um, <laughs> metadata management, getting off on the right foot. You know, that's my EDW 2014 session, and uh, um, then Shannon came to us and said, well, we'd like you to do a, a preview presentation for that. And I thought, it was great. Yeah, I'd love to do a preview presentation for that. I discovered that the preview presentation is about as long as the, the full EDW 2014 session itself. So I'm taking a slightly different spin here. Um, focus really be on one of the topics that I'm going to be talking about in Austin Meta. Because there are a range of topics that I think you need to deal with to make sure that when you kick off a metadata management program, it's successful. And not just successful, but sustainable as well. I've taken a whole different half dozen topics probably and and put them into this list too. But I, this time around, I'd focus on what I think of as, in a way, the, the soft topics rather than um, the hard topics. There are other things that I could talk about, like the structure of the project and uh, what the data is and all that cool stuff. But I thought we'd talk about some of the, uh, the management type and process type of Today. And, and I want to talk about why these things really matter. And then when we get to uh, Austin, we'll do something slightly different. There's a big pre-question that we might want to address as well. And the pre-question really is, well, why do metadata management at all? As I thought about that, I thought, yeah, I'm, I'm going to shamelessly steal this great cartoon that I saw. Um, data is a love note to the future. 
isn't that a wonderful idea? The thought of it really is, is I've been in this IT business for 35 years. Everybody who meets me looks at me and says that can't possibly true. Be true. It couldn't possibly be more than 30, but it's, it's getting to more than 35 years now. And I look back over all those years. And I think about all the time I've spent researching data and applications and models and all those great things and thinking, if only somebody had documented some information about this stuff when they were creating it, my life now would be so much easier. See, that's the point. The metadata that you attach to your information assets now will be of incalculable value to those that come after you. Actually, they'll be of incalculable value to yourself, too. And you get into trouble trying to say that word twice. That is the way of, of making sure that you don't lose track. So, so that's really why we're here and why we manage metadata and why topics matter. Went to Austin, I'm, I'm going to kind of change gear a little bit and shift the focus to specifically the how of all, all of this stuff. How do we justify the data management? How do you stakeholders? How do you wrap your arms around the scale of a metadata project? Market a metadata solution, and, and if that if, uh, notion is, is making your open a bit and looking your eyebrows good because that's one of the things that I feel very passionate about. Manage the sustainability and I'll talk about what that means. I have to say that I really don't mean how to avoid printing meta models on the reams of paper so that you save the trees. I know those are good things but that's not what we're talking about here. And finally, how do you work with vendors? Now, where aware that I've got my colleagues on uh, on this webinar and uh, some of them may be disappointed because I'm not in the business today of selling ASD's metadata management solutions. They're very wonderful and, and, and try, we will plug them to you and we'll be happy to do that. But today, when it gets to the event session, I want to talk a bit about how the relationship needs to work and just how complex the VETA ecosystem can be. Um, but if you don't manage that successfully, that trip you up as well. And really my objective here is to avoid or help you avoid the things that I have seen being metadata management programs cutting down around the ears of those that have been tasked with uh, doing them. So let me, let me try and um, with these topics and get a sense of, of my view of why we care about some of these issues. So let's start with the big one. I want to say, by the way, that I hope to uh, be speaking for 40 to 45 minutes and leave a, a fair amount of time for Q&A at the end or random abuse, if that seems to make sense. Um, when we get to the end, I'm, I'm hoping that we're going to have a fairly lively discussion about some of this stuff, and maybe also tee up some of the uh, discussion for Austin. Let's talk about why bother justifying metadata management. Is that a fair question? And why should we bother justifying it? We, it is a serious question. And it's a serious question because, quite frankly, metadata management is not cheap. It's not cheap in terms of the software you buy. Well, frankly, that may be the least of it. It's deep in terms of the effort that you put into it. And it may also not be cheap in terms of what I might call the political capital that is going to be expended if there's going to be a really valuable initiative for your organization. So let's talk in, in just a tiny bit more detail about some of the reasons for justification. This, of course, and sadly, it's the one that people perhaps spend more time on than anything else, is funding. No doubt there is money to be spent on most 
things I just talked about. Uh, there's money to be spent on buying software. There's money to be spent on infrastructure. There's money to be spent on education. And there's money or resources at least to be spent on implementation. There is money to be spent or resources consumed populating or propagating the set of facilities around your organization. So there is undoubtedly a cost for business. And um, quite frankly, if you not sit down at the front and figure out the cost and benefit of what you're going to do with metadata management, of getting two way through and somebody pull the plug on you. Worst case, you actually get years in. In. Uh, the saddest story that, that I know in the metadata business is when I went to uh, an organization, actually it was an organization in um, South Africa, which wanted to identify themselves, and I sat down with the technical people, and the technical people said, we've been working on this for three years, we've got all the metadata into our repository, ready to go, we're launching next week. And, you know, perhaps 30 minutes later, I went next door and talked to the business folks and their executives, and I said, so you're, you're launching your, your metadata project next week. And they said, metadata? Yeah, yeah, we, we remember that. You know, those people have been working on it for three years, and we've got nothing. We're pulling the plug on that. You know, that's the risk. So you have to figure out your funding and even your cash flow. The second reason for justifying metadata management is more subtle. But go through the justification process. You ask yourself the question, why are we doing this? And if like some people I know, you go through the question iteratively, it's why are we doing this? Well, why does that matter? Yes, but is that important? Actually enables you to focus your program. And funding the program is in a very important issue because there's a ton of stuff you can do. If there's anybody on this uh, webinar who hasn't looked at metadata management and said, oh, that's kind of like a mountain. In fact, it's kind of like a mountain range because all that um, structure, traditional, classic, that, that I want to manage. And then over there, there's all that kind of uh, content stuff, documents and things like that, and maybe I want to manage that too. And, uh, and now somebody's coming along with this this big data stuff, and, and maybe that's got metadata too. And when I come to Austin, we can chat about that. That's a whole other story because they're stinking metadata. Uh, so, you know, there's, there's the issue of focus just naturally drives you to, to define the boundaries of your project. Thirdly, there's the topic of accountability. Because I establish the funding and you establish the focus, you're starting to establish a straight line of responsibility between payment and benefits. It actually establishes accountability and makes people responsible for programs. Not the people that are busy doing the, the metadata management implementation work, but the other people that should be playing nicely with them. And that is a very serious issue. These are things that can very easily trip you up. Lack of funding, lack of focus, or lack of accountability. Justifying the metadata management program and making sure everybody knows what the justification is and communication of justification is um, a very important issue too. It's kind of good work in the uh, you know, in your office and create yourself a nice little spreadsheet with a little numerical justification. If you don't communicate that and sell it, it doesn't work. But justification is important. Probably the first thing you have to do before you can get off the ground. Topic: Managing your stakeholders and 
by holders, I mean anybody who can be impacted by your metadata management activities. So it might be people who have to uh, lose money. It might be people who have to uh, gain money. It might be people who have to uh, invest time. It might be people who are getting business value or folks that are working for them. It might be people who are getting IT value or the folks that work for them. It may even be the people in your organization who are responsible for trading and managing your infrastructure. At least this set of people are, are the stakeholders. And to say, I kind of vulgarly called the people in the top left-hand corner the money. In the end, is signing a check for all of this. It might be a CFO, it might be a CIO. Don't know who it is, but whoever is signing the check is a good stakeholder, they have to, in the end, get value for money. Now, I learned fairly early on in my, my career, at least my career in the world, went down with somebody and they said, essentially, well, I can open a new branch office or I can buy you your stuff. Why should I buy your stuff? Well, that's something that needs to be um, addressed. So, what to do? clear to understand who your stakeholders are, but why should we bother managing them? What's the point? Should it be explicit concern? I pull out these four things to think about. First thing is your holders are the people who will bring you resources. And of course, the fairly basic resource of cash needed. Your resources in terms of people, uh, resources in terms of the source of metadata, the data, the content, the big data. I noticed in the Q&A already that somebody's observed that really there is metadata with big data. I just threw that one out there to, uh, to provoke a discussion. Shame on me, and we will talk about that a bit. Um, but holders will bring you the data. They'll also help you understand use cases. It's vastly unlikely that any tasked with managing metadata or, or building a metadata management program will know from the beginning, sight unseen, all valuable things that meta could be used for in their enterprise. Equally unlikely that they'll be able to put a value on it. It's hard to understand, you know, why is this particular use of metadata one that we should invest in, and, and this is one that we shouldn't? Stakeholders will help you understand that. Stakeholders have influence. They have influence on the funding. It's not the people in the top left-hand corner of the previous slide that control the money, all of the stakeholders have influence on the funding, one or another. And so all the stakeholders talk to each other, and so they influence each other. And it can be scary pretty quickly, because all of the stakeholders, of course, have contacts internally and externally. They know stuff. They know stuff about the software that you might be using. And one of the things that we, we run into fairly frequently is somebody will say, oh, yeah, I used, uh, I used Rochade at such and such a place. So, and that influence one another. So your, your stakeholders will influence each other, and they will influence your prize as a whole, your business. You know, further and further into the business, perhaps the individual uh, may it be touched by metadata, may individually, not a great deal of influence, but cumulatively, it can be enormous. And the overall impact on the business and the business perception of what you're up to is extremely important. And therefore, you need to be managing the perceptions that stakeholders have of your program and of what you're doing. The key for your requirements.
experiment, and this is a subtle one in its way too, because it's ongoing. Not only can they tell you what they want you to do, but they can do when they want you to do it. And over time, you'll kind of adjust those expectations and desires. And the more time you spend managing your stakeholders, interacting with them, communicating with them, more likely you are to be successful. Change to to deal with, because a lot of people, you know, a lot easier in some ways to uh, a small group of people sit on it, decide to do a major management project, d deliver it, and then proudly sit back and expect the world to consume it. Fortunately, as probably everybody on this call knows, that's not how it works. You have to explicitly manage it. Your stakeholders have impact. They impact on your sources. They can actually either explicitly or explicitly determine whether you have what you need to get the job done or what you don't. They have impact on your schedule. They have your schedule both because they can tell you when you need things and because they have to participate in what you're doing and they can decide to be available or not be available. Again, all of us, I think, that have been involved in significant projects of one sort or other know how frustrating it can be when there are maybe a dozen key people that you need to get together for a, a meeting or an agreement or a discussion, and it's simply impossible to get them all lined up. Now, their act on your schedule can be drastic. And what it adds up to as a bottom line is they impact your survival. Your stakeholders are really what you live and die by. It therefore follows that failing to make a very explicit understanding of who your, who your stakeholders are is a death matter. I'm going to have this more um, in the form presentation, but I would strongly recommend that you think about your stakeholders as a portfolio. And all kind of map them out is this classic kind of matrix kind of mapping. You you map them out according to their their influence and resources and their impact and determine who the high impact, high resource people are and make sure that you look after those folks very carefully. So much for managing stakeholders. Uh, yeah, shamelessly stolen cartoon number two. What do your stakeholders think of today? Explanation from Geek Hoke, whoever Geek and Poke are. What are they? It's a word, eight letters. Rips. That's kind of how people somewhat think about metadata. And actually, I'm going to wander a little bit off the wide path and onto the how path for a minute. Uh, one of the things that we have found increasingly effective for who we work with is to avoid the M word. Don't talk much about metadata. And ideally, give your metadata management program a personality. So, you know, what we worked with call, actually called their metadata management program the brain. And they actually did little or kind of key, but little brains that they gave to people. It gave a program a personality, and that actually was part of their success. So that, that's something to think about. People don't much care to think about metadata. Sitting your stakeholders, that's something to take account of. Our next topic, swing a project. Why does it matter how big the elephant is? That's a really good question. And I'll tell you, it, um, just the Hadoop elephant, metadata management is an, an elephant. Um, what kind of thought experiment that you can, be, can do? Think of the number of different title classes of information asset you have in your enterprise, and then how far you can can get, I don't know, with a sheet of paper, let's say, just speculating about how many of each class 
you've got. Um, numbers get big pretty quickly. Um, things will have happened. So you will have proved that you fit into the same class as most of the other um, enterprises that are dealing with metadata management. And secondly, you will likely have scared yourself a little bit. But the thing, um, soap and resources and time and me are if um, flexibly related. Scope, how much it's going to cost, what resources you're going to need, and how long it's going to take. And on the other hand, the resources you've got, the time you've got, and the money you've got are limiting factors on scope. You know, the old thing about cutting your coat according to your cloth. So actually defining the scope Scope is a very important activity. And the scope really comes in four sort of areas that you're going to be thinking about. One is the user community. How many different groups are you trying to support and buy? One of those that has, has happened, which is really interesting in the metadata world over the past 50 years, is 50 years ago, the number of people who are using the results of metadata management programs explicitly was small. In this maybe up to 100 if it was a fairly advanced organization and the, uh, the data analysts and modelers and things like that were explicitly using metadata. It has exploded to the point where some organizations that we're dealing with, it is in the thousands or even tens of thousands. People necessarily know they're using things some called metadata or things called metadata management facilities. No, not really. They know that they're using the info brain or where it is to get information about this they're looking at. They're looking at a report or uh, a data or something like that. They need to know more about it. They're asking a question. They're getting a response. Data management. That's running into the thousands now. We're dealing with 10 or 100 people, the scope was something you could easily wrap your arms around. Now, not so. So I think the scope in that area is very important. That's the metadata sources. I talked about that a couple of minutes ago. You know, get a of paper, start writing down the resources you've got and the connections between them. You'll really realize that this is very challenging and somehow we're going to wrap our arms around this, otherwise we'll never have a project that is delivering value. Certification capability. What do we do about that? What can we do with the today once we've got it? And we can do an awful lot of stuff with it. We can do it with, uh, with support glossaries, make sure people are using this in business language. We can use it to support reference data, make sure people are using the same data for the same things because the categorization is accurate. Uh, we can use data management to support processes and business flow, and as it goes. So we, we're going to have to think about, okay, what patient capabilities are we intend on supporting and why? As integration opportunities. Integration opportunities inside the enterprise and across enterprise borders. And it's the blob in the middle, which is why this is so important. It's about expectation management. So if somebody, you're going to uh, do a metadata management project, and uh, the discussion might go something like this. So I'm going to do a metadata management program. Wow, uh, so what's, what's better than the uh, management um, stuff? Well, yeah, it's kind of like uh, you've got all this information and it's difficult to use because it's hard to find and when you found it, it's hard to understand and when you understand it, it's hard to know what it's connected to. Well, we're going to fix all that. And suddenly you've created uh, an expectation that we pieces going to break out. You create a massive expectation. Defining scope is extraordinarily important because it is expectations. 
And managing expectations, of course, ties back to managing your stakeholders. And one of the things we often encourage people to do, in fact, is identify key stakeholders and know that all of the key stakeholders are getting something in a short period of time with that data management project. You know, a historic tendency to structure metadata management programs technically, and it's really kind of thing, putting the cart before the horse. You really have to think about your stakeholders and their business drivers and figure out how to satisfy those. So we'll, we'll talk about some of that stuff. Um, to, um, I was going to say, when we get to Texas, and for a moment I thought, is that the right state? Yes, that's the right state. When we get to Texas, we'll talk about all that stuff. Next, I want to talk about um, perhaps this is the strangest idea of all if you're on the technical side of the metadata management. House. If you're on the business side, this probably makes perfect sense. But on the technical side, the idea of marketing your program might not seem to make any sense. But really, here's how it goes. First of all, you program that you want people in your enterprise to invest in. You want sponsorship, funding, and involvement. Think about pretty much any activity that has a significant amount of sponsorship, funding, and involvement. They have management, right? Um, they have marketing. There's an advertising, if you like, of, of this is what we're going to do for you. These are the benefits. This we will improve your bottom line. This is how we will eliminate your, your risk. There's a whole marketing process which leads you to the point where people will say, I, uh, I believe you're trying to do it. And by the way, it's a matter of belief till you later on and, and demonstrate that your results match your advertising. And so I see that in, in all too few places. I see the uh, the purpose of going back, let's say after twelve months and saying, remember what I told you we were going to do for you? we did. And yet what we did matches what we said we were going to do. So here, this is what we're going to do. We just did me some more for the next 12 months. That is an iterative and ongoing process of communicating back to your stakeholders getting what they're investing in. And that investment, of course, can be tiny or resources. This adoption um, Adoption is, is getting all people to use your solution. I have my vendor hat on for a minute, if I may. Um, it's not really getting more people to adopt my solution. It's getting more people to adopt your solution. Because this is a program that you have ownership of. And the people that are using the results of your program and benefiting from it, the best is going to be for you. So it's about gaining users and value and direction. And we'll talk about how to do that. Gaining users you know, is almost self-evident. Um, so let me ask you this question, thing to think about. How many people are there who work in organizations that are dependent on the profitability of proper information at the right time to get their job Done. That's a question 20 or 30 years ago. The proportion might have been fairly high. There were a number of people who, frankly, were, were very self directed and were just doing things that they were supposed to do day in and day out. There were people day in typical businesses, the types of businesses we work for, that don't depend on information to get their job done, very small. So, gain users for your metadata management 
solution and major impact on the success of your business, and hence the value that you're achieving. But the part of marketing is the inbound part of marketing. It's not about outward communication. It's also about collecting information from people that you are marketing to. And that enables you to get your direction right. If you're in constant marketing communication with your stakeholders and their user the community, they are giving you constant direction about whether you're doing well or badly, what you should be improving, what is already great, and what you should be doing next. They give you direction. That is a huge value. The third part is uh, really the extension part. Um, Net management is not a product or a project. Uh, I word several times, I think. It's a program. It is something that goes on. And uh, the, the way I like to look at this is really you want to place your program into uh, manageable pieces and think about the appetite for value of your organization. Now, there are some organizations that if they don't see in three months board and move on to the next thing, there are others that are perhaps prepared to wait 20 months. I never suggest that you um, have a phase of your program or a sub-project that does long as 18 months. In fact, um, I suggest that people aim at three to six month bites. But it's about that. Each time you want to get started on the next bite, you support for the next thing. And really, you're thinking about the next big thing for the business. In a straightforward kind of way of looking at metadata management, it's about do information technology better. It's about making business use of information better. If you can focus on the business use of information, you're going to have hugely more significant impact than if you focus on the efficiency of IT. So I really, the third part of marketing is understanding and getting support for the next big thing for the business. Now let's talk about managing for sustainability. So kind as to mention my uh, daily blog at the beginning of this session. I have that one of the things that started me blogging for data diversity was the thought that I like to spend time writing about why sometimes metadata management projects just fall apart or programs fall apart. And I just cycle in, in quite a few places. And Frank doesn't matter very much what technology people are using. Uh, it's all to do with this kind of cycle. Uh, an organization determines that information assets are out of control. A, a triggering event that occurs usually. A triggering event can be you know, it's like a compliance failure. Yeah, we accidentally expose identifiable information. And there's a storm in the media, and people get fired, and there's big embarrassment. Uh, or as simple as there's, there's a new CEO. You know, I was talking to their organization last year, and uh, they'd, they'd had a new CEO come in, and uh, he for what he thought was a pretty simple piece of information. He said, yeah, so tell me. On average, how long do people occupy a bed in, in wild facilities? He got six different answers. Well, at that point, his response was along the lines of, and I think I've entered this for a, a mixed audience. Really, that's not very good, is it? I think we need to have one answer. Go and fix this for me, please. An event for... Um, a metadata management project. So some kind of triggering event occurs and management decides to invest in metadata. And it's interesting. Management decides to invest in metadata and they usually appoint somebody to be in charge. 
And it's my thought that the rest of the people who get put in charge are at least um, reasonable communicators. They have a certain amount of uh, ability to uh, mark their ideas and uh, a solution. So I tend to think of these people as the metadata evangelists. The meta evangelist. Do it in two ways. First of all, don't be that person. Do one person on whom meta management is perceived to hang. If you're a manager and you're in charge of this operation, you're, you're actually setting up a metadata management program, try not to let somebody become a metadata evangelist uh, because. If you look at a data evangelist, all kinds of bad things can happen. Never I've seen it all too often. One be metadata evangelist, and you know what? Because that person is such an enthusiast, the initial project is successful, and all the declares success. The champagne or appropriately fizzy water are, are, are popped, and everybody rejoices and. Uh, well, enthusiasm wanes for a whole variety of reasons, and I could spend a long time on what a variety of reasons are, but let's just take it there. Enthusiasm wanes, and the evangelist does. The metadata management program decays, and things kind of go bad for a while, and information is out of control. Now, this is not unique to metadata. It's, it's a chat to every project that depends on technology that's kind of hard to implement. So the same thing with data warehouse management projects, uh, with uh, ERP projects, and, and it's, um, if people on this, this webinar, I would think quite a lot of you have seen uh, this kind in, in one project or another. We're going to spend some time in Austin talking about you know, how do you avoid this cycle? How do you manage for long-term sustainability? The thing we're going to talk about is working with vendors. The first thing I, I really want to say is it's not us against them or, or me against you. Let, let's be clear about that. I have no investment in in you failing, and you have no investment in me failing. Nevertheless, we have different goals. You know, me, you are focused on your needs and your needs only. I then have to be aware that I've got quite a few customers to look after. And so I have to look to the future and not just to where I am right now. So that's that's kind of my perspective as, as a vendor. And in the metadata management ecosystem, you've got a lot of different vendors. You vendor of the metadata technology, assuming that you didn't write your own. If you wrote your own, we have a whole different conversation to have. Motivation um, for your courage is unbounded. But a whole different conversation to have. Let's assume you have a metadata technology vendor, then you probably have, have um, all kinds of Technologies from which you are acquiring metadata might be applications, might be uh, data warehousing and decision support technologies, uh, modeling technologies, um, things like your uh, your ER modeling technology or business process modeling technology um, could be big data technologies, um, and there is plenty of those around. You know, add them all together. These are a lot of things that are all changing according to different cycles. And so you have to coordinate those cycles, recognizing that the big wheel ought to be your business needs. And neither of your business are changing constantly. One of the telecom organization implemented a metadata management program because they simply could not change their uh, plans fast enough. Because the application that managed their plans was just too complex. They put place a metadata management probe to deal with that. The issue of 
of working with vendors is recognizing that everything is changing very rapidly. You have to coordinate the changes. If you do that, it is extremely difficult ever to have, as were, a free, working, cohesive environment. So those are, are the things I mostly intend to be talking about in Austin. I dare say we'll talk about other stuff too. Um, I'll be saying, you know, my thoughts about how we do those things and drawing on the experience of um, our colleagues who have done a project and putting in some hopefully practical wisdom about making all of this stuff work. Uh, I've spoken for my contractual 40 to 45 minutes. Um, I'd really like to um, open the floor take questions. Thank you so much. This has been just a great presentation, of course. You always deliver to such talks. Uh, and, and as a uh, tribute, there's a lot of questions coming in. Of course, the most popular question we always get is if people are going to receive copies of the slides and the recording. So I will be sending out a follow-up email to everybody by end of day Thursday with those links to those slides and the recording so everyone will get a copy of all of this information that Ian has presented. Um, so Ian, with the first question here, just kind of a, a foundation question, what's the difference between metadata and master data? Cool question. All right. Let me see if I can explain this. Think of a business transaction. Uh, I sold 5,000 uh, green widgets uh, to um, Polyponopolis in Parsippany, uh, which happens to be, as far as I'm concerned, in my northwest region. It's a um, and I have a number of things. I have a uh, thing that I think is pure numeric quantitative data, 5,000 quantitative numeric data. Then I have things that I think of as um, data. It, per se, in my uh, operation, happens to be in the northwest. I've got a table of regions that is um, classification information which doesn't change very often and essentially tabular, I'm going to call it reference data, and it's by lots of different applications. There are things that I think of as master data, and my master data are um, things which enable me to uniquely identify uh, important entities for my business. In this case, I had um, Polypopolis, who is a customer, Polly has a name and an address, and hopefully I've only got one name and address for Polly that uniquely identifies this particular customer, and that master data. I also had information about widgets, and widgets are products, and there is product master data, and hopefully in my transaction record, the thing that says green widgets is a piece of master data that usefully identifies that unique product. All those things are really data. So I had transaction data, I had reference data, I had master data. Now, there's stuff that describes all of the elements. So stuff that says um, a person's name has two parts, first name, second name. Uh, first name can be four characters long, second name can be 200 characters long, um, it's alphanumeric. The stuff that describes the uh, name field is metadata about the name field. So metadata is descriptive information about information assets. Master data is information that is used to uniquely identify instances of entities which are important to the business. Rinse data is essentially slow moving, categorizing information and numerical data is numerical data used to add things up. A great question, great answer. Um, should we hit the topic of big data has metadata? <laughs> yes, I know, I was being mean. <laughs> 
uh, a lot of uh, the stuff that we're used to working with has cataloged data, and, and that cataloged data is um, very easily identified. And you've got record layouts, and you've got moles, and all of those things are predetermined um, the type of information you're working with. Big data, it's a little different, because actually, uh, a lot of the metadata that are placed to big data is really almost post-operatively applied. I collect information from a lot of different places into uh, what some people call a data lake. And then it can be either the, uh, the way to write the code to do the collection to put things into my big data environment, or it can be uh, information in the, the analytics that I use that actually kind of post-operatively applies the metadata. So it's kind of different, but, but yes, to say there was no metadata was actually a bit of a tease. I, I probably shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Always good. Make sure everyone's paying attention. And um, just Next question is, why do you think a tool is needed for metadata management? As I always say, a fool with a tool is still a fool. What is lacking, what is, lacking is process, not a tool. One should look for tools to, should look for tools to fix a process. Can you comment on that? Um, sure. I disagree. Um, yeah, a fool with a tool uh, is still a fool. Yeah, that's, that's actually true. You should know a smart person with the appropriate tool, still are going to get the job done. And we can kind of trade uh, trade little aphorisms, but uh, bottom line, uh, the information which gives information assets, it is useful to be able to um, manage that information because it enables certain interesting activities. For instance, it enables impact analysis. It enables you to understand the impact of change. It enables uh, the lineage. It enables you to understand where information came from. It enables you to understand the provenance of information. It enables you to understand the structure of information. If you don't have those things, then the good process in the world isn't really going to help you. Just you, you don't need a tool. Now, does everybody need um, a Sing Great Enterprise Metadata Repository? No, yeah, probably not. You know, all organizations and small groups that uh, can do a, a very nice job without a massive um, tool, without a, an industrial strength technology. But listen, if you're on the hook for responsibility for uh, governance of let's say financial or healthcare information or uh, interest in the energy industry, um, you do want something rigorous. A rigorous process is good, but a rigorous process probably depends on rigorous tooling as well. Answer. Uh, next question is uh, again about a tool, but more uh, in terms of purchase. Should you develop an MDM strategy and framework? works for the business and then purchase an MDM solution that fits that strategy, or is it the other way around? No, no, the, the, the answer is yes. Um, you should determine your strategy first and, and acquire your technology second. Uh, I'm not sure whether the person who asked that question was asking of MDM master management or MDM meta management, but actually the answer is the same in both cases. Um, in, and, you know, I, I kind of think about realities here. In circumstances, would you uh, buy a tool for your, for your home improvement project, let's say, without deciding what the project was first and what you were trying to achieve? And it's important to, to understand your strategy first, understand your requirements, and go looking for my technology, which will be the right thing to do it with. Fantastic. And so a uh, little plug here for ASG. Somebody's asking about the most popular metadata products um, available, and if you have any recommendations. Of course, you know, being a, a, the VP marketing of metadata projects at, projects at ASG, maybe you can give us a little uh, quick one on, on the solution. Yes, yeah, so 
ESG's metadata management technology. We have um, really that we, we we focus on. We have ESG or Shade, which is an enterprise metadata repository technology. Now, the applications of enterprise metadata repository is, is deal with a broad range of potentially complex information sources and allows them to be um, tied together to give a, a broad understanding of the enterprise information environment. ESG for Cubic, uh, detailed application metadata repository, formal level of granularity and understanding of applications. I federate the one to the other to provide probably the deepest dive into the lineage that anyone pull off at the moment. Uh, about 200 out of the box distinct data sources, uh, the data glossary uh, or enterprise glossary laid on top of that, um, reference data management, and uh, all being well, instant we'll be showing off our uh, data metadata extension for that, uh, which will be very cool. It will be uh, happy stuff. Yeah, thanks. Right. So, and, 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 you know, um, I'm not going to plug the other guys. Sorry. <laughs> I'm thinking you would, but that's great. No, Ian. And, uh, you know, we had a, a question actually in here for out to all the attendees as well as you and just how about the panelists and attendees share their favorite effective euphemisms and synonyms for metadata that were effective in communications with non-IT people. And if you want to type those up in the chat there, I feel I'd be happy to publish that and send that out to everybody. Um, I think that's a great conversation. And, and Ian, what's your take on that? What's some of your favorite euphemisms and synonyms? Stuff. Stuff. Information. Uh, it's it's the you know actually it's the it's the stuff that makes your information useful. That's with a lot, a lot of people. You'd be surprised. Um, I am going to throw out one observation on that question though. Is, is Ed who says metadata is data about data must go and stay in a corner and bang their head against the wall for the next thirty minutes. <laughs> That's it. That's perfect. <laughs> um, for this question, can you implement a metadata program if you don't have funding? What's your opinion on that? Yes, you can, but you won't go very, very far, and the question of scope becomes absolutely critical. If you don't have funding for... Um, a problem which is capable of being addressed fairly simply, but will solve a problem which is dear to the heart of somebody with money. And and yes, you you can you can do that. After when it comes down to it, I, I just define metadata as the stuff that makes your information useful. It possible to collect some metadata and articulate a use case for a limited amount of metadata that might be valuable? Yes, you probably can. Can you do a full-scale metadata management program without funding? No, not really, because there's always a trade-off between um, funding, um, time, and manpower. And to give an example, I know we're, we're just uh, finishing off a, a process with data diversity with a a, a wonderful white paper in it, which, which I hope you'll all be hearing about shortly, where um, you know, a major financial institution was trying to understand some data flow for critical data elements. It was taking months and months and months and not working, doing it manually, which is kind of the, the metadata funding. Um, and they were able to pull it off very quickly once they'd acquired the, uh, the appropriate building. So yes, you can do something, just no scope. I'm afraid we are. We have some a lot of great questions left, but I'm afraid we are out of time. Um, maybe I send these over to you, Ian, and and uh, see if you have any answers for them uh, to follow up with in the follow up email. If uh, uh, you know. I'll come down and I'll follow up with some of them up. But uh, you know, this is a great way of sucking people into into my uh, EDW presentation. I'll be sure that they all get covered there. 
they don't get covered before. That sounds perfect. I love it. All right, and thank you to everyone, and thanks to all of our attendees, especially those who hung in there for who were having sound issues at the beginning of the presentation, uh, and all these great questions. We just love how interactive everyone is, and, and Ian, thank you for this great uh, presentation that just has has heard a lot of conversation. Uh, it's always a always a great sign. Uh, and just for one, we will be posting the recording of the webinar and the slides to dataversity.net within two business days, and I will send a follow-up email to let you know the links and other requested information by end of day Thursday, so if you don't have it in your inbox by Friday morning, just let me know, and I'll make sure I get you the information. And don't forget to register for Enterprise Day World by this Friday to take advantage of the early bird prices and save $200 and to hear and meet Ian live. And Ian, thank you so much, and ever, thank you, everybody. I hope you guys all have a great day. Thanks. been a pleasure as always. And yeah, I hope you all have a great rest of your day and we'll see you in Texas. Bye-bye. See you in. Bye.